G'day guys, welcome back to the Mitch Does Coffee YouTube channel. See, I don't hate them. Now there are a few rumors in the industry that I don't like La Mazzocco, and it's just simply not true. It is not a secret that I do prefer San Remo as an espresso machine, and the guys at San Remo are like family to me. So it's not that I dislike them, I just have my preferences, and I think one little joke has gotten a little bit out of hand. I made sure I wasn't wearing a San Remo t-shirt today because I feel like that might have just stirred a few people up a little bit too much because La Mazzocco definitely have a great machine. There is no secret about it. There's a reason they are in a lot of cafes. Um, I just prefer the things that a San Remo can do. They focus on the flavors that I prefer where La Mazzocco probably focus more so on a great workhorse machine and there's nothing wrong with that. So this machine in front of me not only is a great little workhorse, it is a custom one of one machine by the guys at SPECT. Um, I will pop a link to some of their machines down below because they make some beautiful stuff. Uh, this has got a lot of timber accents and bits of gold or brass. I'm not sure what the product is, but looks amazing. Um, this machine has had some pretty cool little things added to it, like the Weber Uni filter, great little product. We will be testing this. Um, now we are adding some things. We're just doing a basic annual service with all the valves and springs and steam wand, etc. And we're adding a shot timer as well, simply because this machine doesn't have one. Again, a little bit of an irk with LM for the price of the machine. It probably should have a shot timer in my opinion. Now that's the only part of this video that I am gonna stir up this machine. I will be making a separate video for pointing out maybe some of the differences as to why I prefer some other machines. So other than pointing out that this machine doesn't have a shot timer, we are gonna do a service on this machine. I'm gonna run you guys through how to do an annual service on this thing because they are a great little workhorse, but just like every other machine, they do require maintenance to ensure that they do last forever because this machine does have that capability. So let's head on into the workshop. Let's start pulling this thing apart. So we're in the workshop got the mini on the bench, got the parts laid out, and I'm gonna fill you in as to what the parts are as we go, as it's gonna make a little bit more sense. And like I'd said previously, we are gonna add a shot timer. We're just gonna use the automatic from Luminaire. Um, this is the best option we have at the moment. There are other options out there, but they don't quite suit the final look I think myself and the owner of the machine are looking for. So this is not exactly a permanent solution, which means when we find the thing that we really wanna nail, we can pop this guy off, this can go on something else, and then we can make this thing perfection. So let's disassemble this machine. I wanna get it right down to the bare bones so that we can get inside and replace a couple of parts that do need to be done annually and just inspect for any water leaks, any issues at all, so we can address them and then fix them. Let's go. Always empty your water tray whenever you're servicing a machine. Um, it's a little bit tricky to remove the tray on this machine. However, we are gonna inspect and then later on we're gonna check the tube inside as well. And this is inside the LM Linear Mini. Uh, if you were paying close attention, you may have noticed I was undoing some little bolts here. You need to loosen this enough to get this out of the way. You can remove it if need be to move it right out of the way because that protrudes underneath the frame. So you need to drop all that out of the way so that you can move things without breaking the plastic. So the first thing I do whenever I pull a machine apart straight away is I look to the base Make sure there's no water leaks. There's obviously little bits of coffee grounds and stuff in here. That's completely normal. We are gonna clean all of that. 
but it looks to be no leaks coming from the element from the main boiler we're looking pretty good it's looking nice little fun fact if you do want to adjust the extraction pressure of your machine this is where you do it undo this lock nut um, please use some care when doing this because you will have to have the machine turned on while all of this is exposed to get to this unless you drill a hole in the back of the machine which I have done very similar on my machine so undo this while you're extracting a shot adjust the bolt pretty simple lock it back up that's your extraction pressure really simple so one of the main parts that you replace when servicing a machine is the main pressure valve this is a 2.5 bar pressure valve which is what this machine is supposed to have um, if your machine is making more than two bar of pressure on an LM, you need to maybe look at some things. Um, this is purely a safety valve, so it shouldn't be getting above two bar on the main pressure gauge. If it is, maybe pull some things out, clean some things. Uh, you might have some scale built up and it's not reading correctly or there's some blockages. So if it's over two bar, it's probably overheating. So maybe look into that or take it to a technician and get this thing serviced. But for now, we are replacing this, which there's nothing wrong with this machine. It's just due for a new one. It is inside here. So you need to undo these two bolts. This one's already loose, thanks to the previous technician. Thank you. Um, so we'll dive into this one in a moment. That is your valve inside. We're gonna pull that out and then replace it with the new one. This video is interrupted by a visit to Bunnings Hardware. This video in no way is sponsored by Bunnings Hardware. So I don't know if this happens to you guys, but it uh, happens to me quite often. You don't remember that uh, you've lent someone tools until you need them, and then you can't remember who it was. Cool. See you in a sec. So we are back. Yes, we had to do a little trip to Bunnings because I lent my tools to someone and didn't realise until I needed them. So we needed a 22 and a 24 millimetre deep socket because the brand of valves that we're using aren't identical to each other. These are constantly changing depending on who's got stock. So, I needed to buy tools. Let's get into it. This part is very important. Be careful if you're doing this because you can break things and I'll show you why. So for this part, you need to be very careful. We are using a 24 millimeter deep socket for the valve. Now don't just pop that on there and yeet it because these are very fragile. Um, whether they're made of copper, brass, aluminium, or sometimes even plastic, you need to be very careful. You can't just undo that. Well, you might be able to, but there's a chance of breaking something. You want to support it with the nut that's under here. I might even get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this extension. We don't need that. That's just adding to leverage, making it harder. So typically, like I was saying, you can just use a ratchet and a large spanner or a shifter to support everything. However, it was extremely tight and it wasn't happy. Um, it was actually creating a lot of twist on the line. So we actually had to go and using that to support underneath and then turning on top, there was no twisting. It still doesn't sound great. It definitely doesn't feel good. I don't like doing that on machines, but it was the only way to do it safely in this case. So if you're going to do that, start on the lowest setting possible and just work your way up until it comes free. Please be careful there. That line is very expensive. So take care. And we can chuck this back on now, but we're going to wait just so when we turn the machine back on, we can test and make sure it's doing its job. All right, so now that the valve is replaced, we can move on to servicing the steam wand, replacing all of the moving parts inside there, the O-rings, the main pin, and uh, this one's a little bit more fun, a little bit, uh, you need to be very careful here, pulling things apart. There is definitely a certain order that everything has to go. I'll give you a close up and I'm gonna lay everything out in the correct order that you remove. Typically, this is threaded like that, but this is all custom. So you can glue those in. I dare say it probably was at one stage but that's fine. That's the easiest way to do it. When it's like this, get everything out of the way because you don't want to damage any of these parts. I'm trying to do this with a camera in the way is interesting. You, once you've removed that horribly installed pin, there's one washer. And like I said, I'm gonna lay everything out in the correct order.
don't lose those. Sometimes there's more than one, two, three, four, or ten, who knows. Unwind this guy, then you've accessed the main section of the steam wand. This is purely just the knob assembly. Now we can undo this guy and get into it. Typically at this stage, you would want to use something to hold in the back there and the correct size socket there, being careful not to scratch the surface. However, apparently we don't need tools today and that can just fall off. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm gonna give you guys a good close up on how to remove all the parts here because it is quite tricky and you definitely don't wanna break anything here. So there's a couple of techniques. The first thing you need to remove is this uh, return line. So this is essentially when you stop, it lets everything plumb back, saves on build up and corrosion, etc. Um, you don't want milk and bits of junk sitting in the steam wand and this helps with that. Pop that guy out. Now we just want to undo this guy here, that one. Um, we do need to be quite careful again. We don't want to break anything, so be very careful. And the easiest way to support is actually just put a spanner or something onto this section here. You don't need a great deal of force, but they're typically pretty tight. Um, I'm assuming that this one probably isn't. Yeah, no. So that should be tighter than that. And it will be once I'm finished with it. But let's get this guy out. And we can move on to the next step, start pulling this guy apart. So that is your complete steam wand assembly removed from the machine. You can do this while it's still in the machine, but don't. Just pull it apart, clean everything, inspect everything, just make sure everything's tight and you can clean inside so much better as well. So that's the way I would always recommend doing it and just double check everything while it's apart. So you can see here when I've removed the steam knob, I've kept everything in the order that it came out. We will be replacing that guy there. But for now, just lay everything out the way it came and then move on to the next section and do the same thing. I would highly recommend always laying things out and then matching it up with the new part before you install. So first thing you wanna do is just pull the actual steam wand itself off. Get out of the way. There's a couple of O-rings there that we're going to replace in a moment but we're not there yet. We do need to pull apart these two sections. Um, probably the safest way is chuck that in a, um, in a vise, soft jaws of course, be very careful and pull it apart. So I've just broken the seal between those two. Now we can pull this apart. There will be a little bit of pressure because there's a spring inside. So just be careful and mindful that things might fall apart. So just take your time. All right, that looks horrible. Okay, oh yeah, so there's definitely uh, some friction going on inside there and this is a very good reason as to why we service these. Yeah, definitely. Um, there is also a copper washer in here we're going to pull out. So after a good little battle, we finally got that out. Um, that was ridiculous. I don't know why that was so hard to get out, but we've got the new one here. That's what it used to look like. So it is a crush washer. It is designed to flatten, um, but that was very, very tricky to get that out. But we're gonna give that a clean up, make sure it's all good. That one's ready to go back in. Now back onto the main section. Um, we need to remove the circlip here, just using some circlip pliers. Pop that in there. Again, it's spring-loaded, so be careful. We will be replacing that guy. And then we can slide this out, exposing some more O-rings. And then if you look very closely into this main chamber, there is a little brass section in there. We do need to get that out as we're replacing that as well. Be quite careful here because you do not want to score any of this outside surface. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I'm not showing the footage that I just took simply because the previous technician did some things that I wouldn't really put on camera. 
Um, this is something I'll chat to the owner about. No one else needs to know. That's fine. Moving forward, um, let's get some third grade lubricant. This is the Lubrifilm from Haynes. This stuff is perfect for pretty much everything coffee machine related. There's a couple of machines that require other things, but for this, perfect. Lubricate everything. Now, this is a little bit of a trick. Pop that guy onto there. And then just using some pressure and turning it at the same time. Making sure that O-ring pops down inside because you don't want anything to break. So you do need to be careful here. And then eventually it will pop in like that. Now you want that nice and smooth. Uh, when that came out previously, it was quite rough. Um, I don't know if it's the film they used or I, I don't know, maybe some lack of maintenance there. But I know that the guy that owns this does look after it. So I dare say it's probably just the uh, lubricant they used. Maybe it wasn't perfectly suitable. So I just made a bit of a mistake with the camera. You hit the button to stop it instead of start it. Um, make sure you pop the new crush washer inside there and torque everything down to the correct spec. Um, and then we're ready to move on to the next step, which is steam wand on. Doesn't matter where you put it. It goes on anywhere. Grab this little guy. And you can just pop that on there. That is done. Ready to go back into the machine. So I've just cleaned up the surface around here. Um, because the bolt was a little bit loose, it has been moving and it's actually chipped the paint off in a couple of spots. Um, I'm going to try to seal this up and then let it dry and then I'll reassemble um, because we don't want to leave that exposed. There's heat, water, um, which can obviously lead to corrosion and rust and we definitely don't want that. So as you can see, I've sealed up that surface using some paint. Um, I did the inside as well because it was really bad. Um, it's still not perfect by any means, but it's definitely going to help. Um, I'm not pulling the machine apart to touch that paint up. That's a whole other level of things. So once that paint dries, we can reassemble and we'll get back to you then. While we were waiting for that paint to dry, uh, I rebuilt the hot water tap as well. It's much easier. Essentially, you pull that off the same way if you wanted to pull everything apart. There's really only two O-rings you need to replace. If you can do this side, you can definitely do this one. So it's much, much easier. But now that the paint is dry, we're gonna reassemble this side and then we can move on to things that are a little bit more fun because I don't enjoy that part. Now this is where we're going to do it the right way and tighten this all down properly once we've tightened everything on the inside. So I'm going to slide this guy back up, make sure everything's in place. Tighten these things down. I'm sorry if the camera's shaking, this is the only way for me to do it. Because I, don't, I can't afford a cameraman, who do you think I am? Lance Hedrick? So using that little trick from before, we're holding that guy there. 17 mil spanner and just get that guy nice and tight. Now this line is stainless steel, so it's a little bit stronger. So you don't have to be as cautious with it, but you know, still be careful. These things are very expensive. So now that we need to tighten this, we need to be very cautious here that we don't break anything. And at the same time, keep an eye on the steam wand angle because you can essentially adjust how far left and right this sits. Obviously you want it in the middle, so that when you're moving the steam one, it's not dragging along the edges, kind of like the hot water is right now, but we're going to sort that out. So you can do this a few different ways. Be very careful not to scratch the machine. Hold it where you want it and tighten. Beautiful. That is perfect. First go. Awesome. Let's sort out the other side. So once you're at this point, we can start reassembling these bits and pieces. I am going to re-glue the uh, inner section of this as well, just because I don't like how that's sitting in there. It's just, uh, it's gonna rattle and 
I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to these things. So I'm going to fix that while it's all apart and then the customer doesn't have to worry about it. So as you can see, we are all reassembled there. Hi Layla. Shop dog. We are put all back together. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just do the opposite of how you pulled it apart. Um, now we're going to move on to removing the... Uh... Okay. Anyway. So, we're replacing... We don't need tools apparently. You definitely do need tools. That needs to... That, yes, it needs to be tighter than that. But this is essentially that little valve you hear closing when you turn the machine on. There are three parts to it. So the little parts there, the o-ring and of course the little needle. We're replacing all three of those parts with these guys here. Let's assemble those and pop them in. So assemble the o-ring onto here. Yes, I know I'm not wearing gloves. My hands are sweaty. Pop that guy into there. And when these are new, the little nylon section can be a bit tricky. So just make sure you put it in there nice and square. Yes, I know it's round. It's just, it's a very nice firm fit. That's on. Grab this guy, pop it down. And then believe it or not, you tighten it using tools, not your hands. So always support the lower, especially when it's on these sort of fittings. There you go. That wasn't hard. Pop the return line back on there. And that is that part done also. Now off camera, I am going to go over every fitting on this machine just in case. Um, now I'm not doubting the previous technician. I just wanna make sure this thing's done properly for my own peace of mind. So service side of things, the machine is done. Um, we do need to do the seal of course. But internally, while the machine is apart, we need to add a shot timer. Like I said previously, we're just using the Luminaire. I'm going to have a play, see where I can make this thing fit to my best abilities without modifying the machine to a permanent solution because this might not be the end result of this machine. We just want a shot timer and this right now is the best option in my opinion without cutting holes and mucking around too much with the machine. Let's put this guy on. I'm going to take some photos, send them to the customer, and then we're going to work out where it's going to go. So I've popped some water in, drip tray back in. Uh, a couple of things we want to test is for leaks and etc. seeing as though we've just serviced this thing. Um, and also I want to just play with the shot timer. We haven't mounted it permanently just yet, but I just want to double check exactly where we're going to mount it and run all the wiring before we put everything back together, which means... Let's turn this bad boy on, wait for it to warm up, and then go from there. While we're waiting for the machine to warm up, we can still work on the machine. I'm just going to pull the shower screen out and replace the main group head seal. Um, now the customer does have an IMS in here. He does actually have a, a nano quartz coated one that he forgot to give me. He's going to pop that new shower screen in later. I'm going to pull this group seal out, chuck a new one in, and then hopefully this thing doesn't, doesn't take too much longer. We can test everything, but so far we're looking pretty good. Yes, that's hot. Now there are a couple of ways to install this, but I'm going to show you my favorite way. Customer does opt for his Weber uni filter, of course, because this is very expensive and he likes it. Now the reason I'm using this one is to test the spacing because if you use different thickness uh, group head seals, you can add or remove spaces to get the correct position. So let's pop this guy in. That guy's way too thick. All right, we need to use a thinner, a thinner seal so that we can get a better orientation of the porter filter. Much better. So that is the correct size. That's the one we're going to be using so that we can use the Weber uni filter. Um, he does have the original Lamazoko one as well, but it seems to be almost identical. So this is going to allow for a little bit of wear because it's still not all the way across, especially with a couple of heat cycles that rubber will, the silicon, sorry, will soften just a little bit and allow that to come up a bit further. So we are going to chuck the IMS shower screen back in. Like I said, the customer has a nano quartz coated one. 
very simple to do. Screwdriver, pop it in. So pop this back in for now. The machine is up to temperature, up to pressure. Everything's holding perfectly. No leaks. We will test the steam wand in just a moment. Everything is looking fantastic. No leaks. Um, I'm gonna pop the cover back on that valve now. Um, if you can hear that noise, it's a bit of like an echo when you open the valve. Cover that. That muffles that noise quite a bit. It's just sucking a little bit of uh, moisture through the tube. That's all that noise is. It's completely normal. Now we can pop the valve cover back on and believe it or not, you can tighten it. So a part of why I started filming when I was servicing machines is to document issues I come across with, like these screws here, they hold the shell onto the machine. They were completely loose. They weren't even touched. So we'll be touching those up as well at the end. Um, but yeah, let's uh, start getting this machine back together because it's ready. So before I do put the machine back together, while we still have a shower screen that I know isn't going to stay in the machine as well, I'm going to do a complete liquid descale and um, just make sure that all the internals are nice and clean because when I purged, I did notice still a little bit of uh, milk residue or calcium did come out of there. So I'm gonna dive deep and just give this thing a really good clean inside. So one more test I wanna do is just for the extraction pressure, making sure that this pressure and this pressure match because I know that this is uh, calibrated to exact pressure. Let's go. So for starters, let's get this thing all right, so that says nine bar there, just over. And this is just under nine bar. So that's perfectly fine. We're definitely close enough. Now that all the tests that need to be done have been completed and everything has passed the test, it's time to pop this thing back together and make it look like a coffee machine again. And then we can get it back to the owner and he can start slinging spros again. Now, one thing that the customer did mention is that he's not too happy with the design of this. And what we mean is just that rattle. So I'm going to experiment with something and see if I can fix that. Because during an extraction, that's going to vibrate. That doesn't sound very nice. I'm going to see what I can do there. So now we have a nicely firm mounted top plate. Um, essentially all I've done is just added some rubber to the base, just used like a bit of a silicon tube, cut a slot and turned it into little, I guess, buffers so that doesn't rattle around anymore and you can still remove it. Perfect. So here we have one beautifully serviced La Mazzocco Linea Mini. We've got a shot timer added. It's kind of the best option we've got with, you know, the parts available. And there's just nowhere really that caters perfectly for it. So that will do. Uh, it's just magnet mounted. That's perfect. But as you can see, she's nice and clean. That top plate not rattling around anymore. Much better. We're looking good. Gave it a nice polish with Sam spray wax. But she's looking good. She's good to go. I'm going to pop it on the brew bar, pull some test shots just to make sure that it is perfect. We are back near the brew bar. We're not on the brew bar. There's no room left because we have too many machines. We're about to get rid of one. Stay tuned. But this machine is now ready for test shots. We need to put some dump shots through it that we're not going to drink because there was some chemical in there just to make sure and just run some shots through it. Make sure everything's good. No water leaks while it's under extreme pressures. And then I can drink a coffee. Let's go. Let's pull its first shot. 
Now this is dialed in for a machine set at seven bar, so don't worry too much about the actual extraction. And we've got the shot timer working. But yeah, definitely too fine for this machine. Didn't exactly dial in, but it's making coffee. I'll keep dialing in and get this thing perfect. So we've pulled a whole bunch of test shots and dump shots just to make sure the machine is all good. And now it's time to make a coffee that I'm actually gonna drink. No pre-infusion because this machine doesn't have it, unfortunately. But we do have a shot timer now. And we have a nice espresso coming out there. Not too bad at all. That's pretty well bang on. So 43 grams out in 26 seconds. We are on. I'm gonna drink this guy. Beautiful, beautiful coffee, as it should be. Now, we have a fully serviced, fully functioning, tested, upgraded, custom Lama Zocco Linear Mini. Wow, that is a mouthful of words. <sighs> Leave it alone. Um, yes, this machine does make great coffee. I didn't expect anything less. Um, machine probably should come with a few other things for the price of it but it didn't but now it has a shot timer um, it should have a digital PID but it doesn't that's okay you can still adjust the temperature of this thing overall this machine is in very good health very happy um, previous technicians have probably not quite done the job amazingly but they've kept it healthy there's been no permanent damage which is great that's all guys Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a great day and happy brewing.